Welcome to the introduction to the Yale 20 internal medicine lecture series. My name is Max Stahl, and I'm one of the second year residents in the internal medicine program at Yale University and Yale School of Medicine. In this introduction, I want to give you the answers to a couple of questions that you might have when you first see the Yale 20. And you ask yourself, why should I really use this resource to learn more about internal medicine? Here are the questions that I want to address. First, why the Yale 20? Why did we come up with the Yale 20? What was the idea behind starting a lecture series for medical students the way we designed it? Second, what is the Yale 20? What does it entail? What can I expect from the Yale 20? Thirdly, how are we doing things at the Yale 20? What's the structure of the Yale 20? And lastly, what's special about the Yale 20? With all the study materials that you have, all the big books, all the lectures, YouTube, everything that is around, why should I go to the Yale 20 to get extra information? In this introduction, I want to give you an answer to all of those four questions. And at the end of the lecture, you hopefully you're going to be convinced that the Yale 20 is a great tool and will help you doing your internal medicine rotations. So when Dennis Shang, another resident in the program, and I started our second year of residency at Yale, really thought about what's the best way of teaching a medical student. We couldn't agree on everything, but one thing we agreed on was in order to teach effectively, you really have to put yourself into the shoes of a third-year medical student who just entered the ward. So thinking back when I was a medical student, what was my experience like? One of the first things I remember, on the first day of the wards, I had all those new team members who wanted different things from me, who had different requests. Okay, there was an intern, there was a resident, there was an attending, and there were nurses. And they all had very different questions and expectations for me. The intern on the team, the youngest member of the team, asked me to give this patient a good antibiotic coverage. The resident, she asked me a little bit more sophisticated question. I thought it was a little more harder for me to, to find a good answer for it. She asked me whether I could go and eyeball a new patient who was just admitted to the medical service and tell her how sick this patient is, whether this patient can stay here or needs ICU coverage. The attending didn't really stick with those basic questions of patient care. He was more interested in pathophysiology and felt like I would be the perfect person to answer it since I just passed my uh, step one of the medical boards. He asked me hyponatremia in this patient. He felt it was very interesting. And he wondered whether I could tell him whether this patient had a salt, a water regulation problem, or both. And then lastly, there was the nurse. The nurse didn't actually ask me about my opinion too much but told me to quickly call somebody higher up. Felt that I should call somebody more grown up because the patient is getting septic. And when I asked what the rationale behind of that was and why he thought the patient would get septic, he just told me, trust me, I got a feeling for that. And well, here I was, I was a third year medical student. I've not really seen a patient. I've not admitted a patient on my own. This was my first day. So I certainly need to trust this nurse. And in general, this is still a good approach even residency and later being attending, to trust nurses. They have a whole lot of experience with their patients. Um, but despite that, I would have loved to know why this nurse thought the patient is getting septic and why he was so worried about this patient and wanted me to call one of the higher-ups right away. Okay, so here was I. I was a medical student. I did not know what a good antibiotic coverage was. Is there a bad antibiotic coverage? What did this intern actually mean with a good antibiotic coverage for this specific patient? In terms of the resident's request, I really asked myself, how do I know how sick this patient is? Aren't all patients in the hospital sick? I understand there's more sick and less sick, but how to tell the difference? How to call the ICU and, and bargain and say, hey, this patient really needs to go to the ICU right now? I had no idea. For the attendings question, the difference between a salt and a water regulation problem. I knew there was something about salt and water regulation. There was aldosterone and ADH. But how did the two of them connect and how did it apply to my specific patient in front of me? And lastly, was this patient really septic? Or did the nurse just make it up to scare me? 
all of those questions were very relevant to me, and I did not have a great explanation for any of them. To summarize the feelings I had on my first day of the wards, I couldn't express it better than giving you this picture. Everything felt for me quite blurry. Okay, I felt I had a good basic science knowledge. I kind of knew what antibiotics were. I studied pharmacology and I learned all the names and side effects and applications, but still it failed me in picking a antibiotic coverage for the specific patient. I guess I knew what a sick patient is, but I couldn't tell nuances. I certainly knew what hyponatremia was and how water is regulated in salt, but tying it together in this patient was difficult for me. And lastly, sepsis is definitely a word I heard before in my microbiology class. But how to tell whether this patient is getting septic right now? All of these questions, I had somewhat of a clue, but everything felt blurry. And I felt the basic knowledge that I acquired in those two years helped me, but I had a hard time tying everything together. So Dennis and I thought, maybe you guys feel the same way during your third year of medical school, and maybe during your fourth, and even maybe during your internship to some extent. The idea behind the Yale 20 is to get you from the state of a blurry vision to a crystal clear vision in internal medicine. And that's how we came up with the Yale 20, 2020 vision for internal medicine. And our idea of giving you a 2020 vision in internal medicine is to first teach you 20 core internal medicine topics. And those topics are specifically targeted for your Med 1 rotation. So the rotation when you just arrived at the medical wards and you're tasked with admitting your first medical patients, those 20 core topics should help you out to get started. And when you move on to your fourth year, to your sub-internship, and later to your internship, we want to give you also 20 more advanced medicine topics. And those advanced topics build up on the basics topics that you learned during your Med 1 rotation. Here are the 20 core topics in internal medicine targeted for your Med 1 rotation. They're structured in different areas of medicine. I'm going to talk about cardiology, pulmonary critical care, gastroenterology, hematology, oncology, nephrology, infectious diseases, and endocrinology. Starting off as cardiology, we felt we have to talk about chest pain and acute coronary syndrome. There are a lot of patients that get admitted with chest pain to the hospital, and you should have a great framework how to approach those. Secondly, CHF, okay, congestive heart failure. You will see a lot of patients on the medicine ward admitted for shortness of breath with a diagnosis of congestive heart failure. And lastly, tachycardia. Without going too much into the different forms and different rhythms, um, of tachycardia, I want to give you a general framework how to approach a patient with a fast heart rate, how to make your first decisions, how to figure out whether this patient needs to go to the cardiac care unit, and what are the first treatment options are, um, depending on what type of tachycardia it is. Then we have a big section of pulmonary and critical care. And some of you might think this is more advanced knowledge and should go in the second section. To some extent, that's true, but we felt that you need a good idea of some critical care aspects in order to master your first internal medicine rotation. You will see one of the most scary moments for a medical student in the third year, fourth year, and even an intern are those points when a patient is getting really sick on the, on the medical ward, when a patient has shock or respiratory failure, so blood pressure is really low, or the patient has a lot of problems breathing. Those are the moments when everybody looks at you and wants to know quickly what to do with the patient, where this patient needs to go to the ICU, and what are your first steps of treatment are in order to make this patient better. And that is why we want to give you a good idea how to approach a patient with shock and respiratory failure. We also want to talk about pulmonary embolus, pleural effusion, and COPD exacerbation. Similar to CHF, COPD is one of the most common reasons for admission to the hospital. In gastroenterology, we focus a lot on cirrhosis because it's a common disease, and when you rotate through our liver service, the clad skin service here at Yale, you will be faced with a lot of patients with cirrhosis. Also, pancreatitis and GI bleed. In hematology and oncology, we start off giving you a basic idea about the different reasons of anemia and thrombocytopenia, and then give you an approach of, of leukemia, 
which is very close to my heart because I want to become a hematologist oncologist. We understand that when you are on the leukemia service, it's very hard for medical students to have an idea how a hematologist or oncologist thinks about leukemia. And there's a lot of molecular information to process, and it's generally very complicated to admit a patient with leukemia and come up with an assessment and plan. We want to help you a little bit in giving you a clear framework how to approach a patient with leukemia. Nephrology, key is going to be acute kidney injury, electrolyte problems, as well as acid base. Infectious diseases, first we want to give you an idea about antibiotics. How to pick a good antibiotic coverage and how to justify it in front of the medical team. We're also going to walk you through the basics of a couple infectious diseases and how to pick good antibiotics for it. If you want to pick one of the infectious diseases in the core topics, we felt pneumonia is a key topic and should be talked about a little bit more in detail. Lastly, endocrinology. Key inpatient aspects is really DKA as an emergency, as well as diabetes mellitus, inpatient and outpatient management. All right, for the more advanced internal medicine topics targeted for your MED2 rotations, we also have different areas of medicine that those topics belong to. First in cardiology, in the basic section, we talked about tachycardia in general. Now we're going to talk about one specific rhythm disorder. This is atrial fibrillation. We have now also an entire section of neurology for the internist. And the reason for this is that we often have medicine patients on our service that have certain neurology problems that we need to be feeling comfortable to because we won't be able to always call a neurology resident for a consult in the middle of the night for problems that really a medicine doctor should have a good approach as well. And those are altered mental status in a patient, alcohol withdrawal, stroke, and seizure. In the gastroenterology section, we're going to talk a little bit more about specific topics of the liver, including acute liver failure, viral hepatitis, and hyperbilirubinemia. Also, the advanced topics, a new section that we have that was not within the basic topics is rheumatology. Right? And what we want you to take away from rheumatology is a basic approach to arthritis, how to approach monoarticular and polyarticular pain, as well as a basic approach to vasculitis. And again, if you have to pick one autoimmune disease that medical students should know, it's most likely SLE. So we're going to talk a little bit more about systemic lupus. In hematology and oncology, after talking about leukemia, in the general section, we also want to talk a little bit about lymphoma, myeloma, and an approach to solid tumors. Nephrology, in the basic section, you learned about acute kidney injury. Now we're going to teach you a little bit about chronic kidney disease, end-stage renal disease, and hemodialysis. Furthermore, you will learn about glomerular diseases, including the nephritic and the nephrotic syndrome. For infectious diseases, we're going to talk a little bit more about specific infectious diseases, including UTI, cellulitis, as well as HIV and tuberculosis, and sepsis and septic shock. And for endocrinology, talk a little bit more about hypothyroidism.